What's going on folks? Welcome back to the channel. Today is the day. This is the first time ever that I'm going to take my Suron Ultra B out for a spin. Now, some of you guys may have seen my video unboxing this bike. This is one of the hardest electric bikes to find in all of North America and I have it. Since I posted that video, a lot of you guys have messaged me asking where and how I got this. If you're interested in getting a Suron Ultra B for yourself, they are still very hard to find. Message me. Uh, this is an import model, which I'm about to explain in a second, but it's different than the ones you can buy from United States dealers for a couple of reasons. And after weighing both options myself, I decided on importing one because it, it's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, long story short, we have the bike here. It is charged. We're going to give it a ride here at Griffith Park, California. I'm going to give you guys my initial thoughts on how the bike feels. All right, so here we have the Ultra B in all of its glory. Obviously, I took the battery out. As you can see, there is a big hole right there where the battery is supposed to go. That's how I was able to fit it in my SUV, which was a enormous task. The battery itself takes up about, I want to say, a third of the weight of the bike. It is enormous. Let me go grab it for scale. And there it is. It is hard to justify how large this thing is just on camera, but it is about double the weight of the stock Suron Light B battery. It's not much bigger, but it is way heavier. So the battery, once you take it out, the bike is really not crazy heavy. It's about the same weight once you take the battery out as the stock Light BX with the battery inside of it, if that makes sense. So it feels probably about 125, maybe 130 pounds uh, with everything besides the battery. So first things first, I paid 5,800 bucks for this bike. That's much cheaper than you can pretty much get it from any US distributor uh, by a lot, by um, like 1,200 bucks. The main drawbacks are one, you have to wait quite a while. And two, once you get the bike, you're kind of on your own. I wouldn't really rely on warranty help from a, a drop shipper, which is how I purchased mine. But here's some benefits of doing it this way. One is you have passenger foot pegs, which are easily removable. If you want to take them off on the US version, you just don't get these. Good luck trying to find them to buy separately. Down the line, they may be available easily, but right now you're just not going to be able to find them. Two, it has turn signals, which I would show you if the battery was in, but uh, these are turn signals. They can signal left, right, or they have an emergency function. Basically, that's that. We're going to slap the battery in and give it a quick spin out here in the park. Here we go. Okay, first time in the cockpit. This switch right here is basically a kill switch, so once it's up, there's nothing will happen. So you have to switch this down, then you hit the ready button, then you select your mode. We're going to go straight into sport mode. All right, we're off. Okay, first ride on the Suron Ultra B. First thing you notice, wow, this bike is, is substantially large. I'm actually gonna bust a U-turn. I am blinded looking back this way. Okay, we're in sport mode. The first thing I notice is that if you've done it, it feels like it's the bike will just straight up hit a wheelie. Like the bike it feels like it tends to, it wants to wheelie. Like it wants to pull itself up and, and start 12 o'clock in. Let's see what we can do here. It's a lot of sand. Oh. Oh. Okay. Good thing we threw the boots on. Okay. So this bike has three riding modes. There's E, D, and S. Said. Also, take note of the beautiful flowers out here in LA right now. We're gonna just mob through them right for the time being. <laughs> we're in Griffith Park. There's not really many trails that we're supposed to be on out here, but we're gonna kind of just avoid people. That's kind of the whole point, is just as long as you don't interrupt any people that are walking on the trails you should be fine e stands for eco d stands for daily which is a little bit more punch that's what we're in right now eco is straight up it feels like exactly like the eco mode on the light beat so it's pretty neutered like it's got enough juice to kind of get you around but it's not there's nothing there so once you hit d it's a little bit more a little bit more going on there this is almost that's almost how sport mode feels on the light beat and then you hit sport. Sport is just unrestrained. The throttle is very twitchy. The bike will spin right out, basically. So those are the three modes. Uh, you got a horn, so there's that. It's got a reverse mode. So once you hold it, you can start reversing. Very cool, we first saw that on the RAR Mantis. Neat feature, you know, kind of like a novelty thing, but I'm sure some people will find some utility in that. Uh, other than that, I don't know if I went over it, but there's a ready switch you have to hit before you start your ride. There's also a headlight that is always on. I don't know why at this point, 
there's not a reason there's not a way to just completely turn the headlight off to save yourself battery when you're riding during the day there's already a switch for the high beam i don't understand why this could not be a switch to turn the headlight off there's turn signals which are cool but why not be able to turn the headlight off i don't understand there's constant daytime running lights from what i understand the headlight will constantly drain between like five to ten percent of your battery at all times that's not scientific so i don't know exactly how much it'll drain but anyways we're gonna hit back into daily mode you see what we got over here this looks like it just dead ends anyways first impressions on how the bike feels it is big and it is comfortable are we stuck right here let's go ahead and use the reverse function <laughs> and we're in reverse let's go ahead and back it up terry oh my god i think i'm covered there's probably so much poison ivy going on over here i'm trying my hardest to not damage any flowers so hopefully we're in good hands right there we got a little hill climb Oh my god, this place is so much more overgrown than it was. Good thing I brought my helmet and my goggles. So, I've never ridden a 72 volt Suron to compare this to. So it's hard to judge how much different the power feels, but I can say compared to the Suron stock, it is, it feels so much better. Like, wow. I know it's kind of criminal how long I had my Suron and I never did a single upgrade to it. I know a lot of people just are not a fan of that in general, but uh, we got a couple options here. I actually want to see where this goes. What happens if you just go down this hill? Where do you end up? Uh, that looks a little bit too off the beaten path for us. A couple things first off, the tires. I was initially, I mean, semi-impressed with them. They're definitely better than the tires you get stock on the Suron Light B. But even once you get this thing going, like, I mean, just look at it. The tires are not substantial. I see why everybody right off the gate is doing the upgrade to um, an 18 in the rear and a 21 in the front. This thing needs better tires. The tires are much better than what come on the stock light B, but they still have so much room for improvement. I mean, let's be honest, Suron knows you're going to upgrade the tires most likely right out of the gate. So, you know, that is what it is. I do want to say, though, Pit. <laughs> I get it now. I get the, the higher voltage thing why everyone upgrades the Suron to 72 volt and changes the controller straight out of the gate. The power is just, it is intoxicating. It feels so good to be able to, to punch it and go. I always said I'm not a speed demon. I don't really care about having that much more top speed, but that acceleration, ooh, it feels good. It feels real good. So every time I put the kickstand up, you have to hit the ready button and we're off. Okay, so that was that. We're actually going to turn around and go back the other way. Right back where we came from. Anyways, um... So, the bike just, it just feels good. The throttle... Oh my god, it's perfect. The delivery of the power is quite literally perfect. It accelerates exactly how you would behave, like... It accelerates just how you would want it to. Like the way that it, it picks up and then it hits its, its top torque. It's just, oh man. That's been one of my problems with all the other e-bikes I'm testing is that the throttle just is, is not consistent enough. For my particular taste at least. It just, it doesn't, oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. Wow, we mobbed it through that without having to take our feet off. That's actually kind of impressive. I mean, one thing I'll say is that the throttle, it feels right in line. It feels like an improved version of the stock Light B throttle. Now, my Light B is from 2022. Apparently, the newer models have an improved throttle, which I assume is this. It just, oh my God, it just feels immaculate. Like, it's just exactly what you expect it to do. When you feather it a little bit, you get a little bit of juice, which, which I know doesn't sound like it's saying a lot. Like, that's the bare minimum, right? But, okay, we're about to hit some, some off-roading. That's it. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm in love. Oh my god. That was crazy. Holy. Dude. 
Okay, I don't really know how to describe this besides the fact that it just, without repeating myself too much, it just, it does what you want it to do. It does what you expect it to do, more importantly, which is equally as important as it doing what you want it to do. Because sometimes you hit the throttle on some of these bikes and it just, it just goes. You know, it just yanks you a little bit. You don't want that. You want to be able to ease into it exactly how, uh, you know. Oh my gosh, bro. This bike is crazy. So one thing that I noticed when I took the bike out of the packaging, you know, because between when I unboxed it and right now, I really haven't touched it at all. I took it for a couple spins around the block, but other than that, I haven't really been riding this bike like that. So uh, I will say that there is like some braking you need to do. What does this even go to? I don't know where, that doesn't really look like a path. It looks like I'm just gonna run over a bunch of flowers. So we're gonna turn around. I see the, I'm already getting utility out of the reverse function. I get what it's for. Cause this bike is just a little too big and heavy to just swing back and forth by yourself. By the way, this whole time we've been in daily mode, not even sport mode. Real quick, we're gonna throw it in sport mode going up this hill. You can see what that's about. It'll easily spin out and loop in sport mode. So you gotta be easy on the throttle. As far as top speed, I do believe this is something that Saronster covered in his video as well. Um, it's not that much faster than a stock Suron. So if you're looking for absolute, you know, balls to the wall top speed, you're still gonna have to do like upgrades here and there to this. But for someone like me, who, you know, I barely did any upgrades to my Suron the entire time I had it. I mean, this, it's just perfect straight out of the box. Like, this is, this is, I couldn't want anything more from what this experience is right now. Like this. Go ahead and pop up the curve here. Be careful because cars come here. Ugh. And there's a little bit better clearance. I would have definitely smashed my, uh, my bash guard on the stock Suron might be going up that little bump. So the bike sits a little bit higher, which is nice. This is where I almost died on the match, if you guys remember. The SUV was coming the wrong way. This is in kilometers per hour, by the way, so even though it looks like I'm going 60 around these turns, I am not, just for the record. But jeez, man, I am so stoked on this bike right now. Just for adventuring and like, you know, being able to do on-off-road stuff, this bike is for sure gonna be unbeatable. It is so comfortable. So powerful, it's so just, oh, it just feels so good. It just feels so freaking good. I've been checking out a lot of people who have already bought theirs here and there. And the first thing they're doing is adjusting the suspension, you know, changing the sag for their body weight and their height and stuff like that. I mean, for me, I don't know, I'm not super particular about my suspension. Oh my God, let's get a full, Brake test right here. Oh wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, that's in grass too. How you doing? Where does this go? Oh man, we're, we're, we're getting off the beaten path. <laughs> I don't know where this goes. I'm just slapping, slapping stuff. Goes nowhere. All right, well, we're gonna turn around and we're gonna utilize the reverse feature. You can hear like a little gear shift when you hit the reverse. Oh, I'm not, I'm not really taking any of these flowers out for the record. Even though it looks like I'm just murking them on camera, I'm not. But definitely, they're definitely all brushing up against me. God. Oh my freaking God. Okay, a couple things to consider when you're moving at that speed. Life is a blur. <laughs> Everything just turns into a blur. Oh my God. Okay. Oh God. Oh no. It's too fun. Fun overload. It's not good. I shouldn't be having this much fun. 
Oh my goodness. Whoa. Okay, I wanna, oh my God. Okay, quick break. What is this machine? Okay. This is what I envisioned the Suron to feel like when I first bought the Lightbee. I felt like it was gonna be something like this. Now, this is it. Like, this is what it was like designed, this is what it was destined to become, I feel like. It's a little bit bigger, it's a little more comfortable, it's a little snappier, it's, it, it's just, oh my God. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy right now. So far, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I have no complaints, I literally don't. I, I don't even know what I would, besides the tires, that's the only thing, I would put a little bit more traction on the, on the rear. Uh, I feel it slipping a little bit when I'm like really just pulling in the grass and a little bit in the dirt. It just felt like, you know, not totally stable. Other than that, man, there's nothing to complain about. This thing is just out of this world. Real quick again, I'm going to touch on it. If you want one, message me. Email me in the description. My email link is in the description. Uh, send me an email. I'm going to get together a list of people if you guys want to buy one that's an import model. I'm going to, you know, get everyone's information together and then we're going to do it all at once. So you can save a bunch of money and uh, get what is the most exciting electric bike I've tried ever since I've even got on this wave. This thing is just out of this world. Let's get back up the hill. We've already had some fun and we haven't ran into any park rangers. So we're gonna make the most of our luck. Start heading back, it's already dark, so let's go. All right, folks, time to make our way back. I kind of want to test how it goes like up a hill like this. We're gonna go ahead and reserve stuff like that for the next video. Go ahead and comment down below. What exactly do you want to see me do on this bike are there certain things you want to test what do you want to know about it feel free to let me know in the next video and there's going to be a lot on this bike uh, i'll try to dig in for you guys go ahead and make our way up out of here boom straight into sport mode we've been in daily this whole time too which is insane like the bike is so capable not even in the max mode now we're in sport mode one thing i do like is even in the sport mode which is just like straight up insanity the bike is still very controllable. The throttle is not just, it's not so twitchy. See, look, you can still, what is this guy, is he about to do donuts? Oh, he kind of, he was coming in like he was about to start swinging. <laughs> the delicacy of the throttle, and then being able to punch it when you want that speed. Oh. All right, we are gonna get out of here. Use our turn signal. And then he, look, it even has emergency mode. <laughs> you know, this thing in China, I guess, is like a straight up commuter device. Like, people buy Surons, you know, to get to work and back. Which, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious they're not trying to pitch that as what they want the US version to be. The US version does not have any of this. It doesn't have this, it doesn't have the, the rear passenger seat pegs. It is strictly off road. So, I mean, there's no saying of whether Suron wants you to have the non import model or not but I have it, so I mean, you know. Anyway, let's go. We gotta get up this hill. This is very steep. Oh my God, that is enough speed to get you in big trouble. And I mean big. Wow. Woo. Exhilarating is not even the word. That is an understatement. Wow, folks, I gotta say, I'm genuinely impressed. Like, I didn't know what I was gonna expect whipping this thing out today, but for $6,000, I hope it is impressive. Obviously, it is. It is, it's, I think it's worth every penny. It's hard to describe why these bikes are worth it to someone who says like, oh, you spent $6,000, you can get, you know, any amount of, of dirt bikes or sport bikes or motorbikes or just anything. I, it's just hard to explain until you ride it. It's just, it is a, a different experience. Uh, that's it for today. Let me know any questions you guys have in the comments about this bike. I will try to answer it in the next video. Yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.